<laughs> well, that's looking pretty darn nice. It would seem that there's a new 3D printer released every day, and they're all just clones of clones. Well, Kaiwu reached out to me and asked if I would like to review their new and upcoming printer called the Tycoon Slim. I'm like, well, where do I sign? I have a Tycoon, and this is a slimmed down version. Now, this is a beta unit, so some things may change. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's in there. Well, first we're greeted with the accessories. I will go ahead and open this box up a little bit later, but I'm going to tell you I'm not going to go in depth into it. And uh, we have our standard, you know, three prong um, power cord. I think I have about 30 of these in my house. And it's nice that they include a sample roll of filament. So many manufacturers just skip this. Everything is just really tightly packed in here. I wonder if uh, packing things a little bit too tight may not be the best idea. What do we have here? Well, we have the touchscreen interface. I believe this is a 3.5 inch display. And uh, yeah, has a pretty big connector on the back and a SD card reader on the side. And uh, let's try to get this gantry out. Like I said, it is packed in really tight. So be very, very careful because uh, you'll see right here, it is attached to the base. So definitely gonna need to take them both out pretty much at the same time. And with it being packed as tightly as it is, that might be a little difficult. So let's go ahead and throw this up on the workbench for now. Like I said, this accessory box is preloaded. You get some tools and some spare parts as well as parts to assemble the machine. If you want, you can go ahead and pause this and uh, you can see the menu on the left. Let's carry on. Now we're going to just go ahead and slide in this gantry. It is actually milled uh, right here on the side, so it slides right in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our two bolts here, and uh, when we insert these bolts, we're going to need to raise the gantry up a little bit. So we can go ahead and slide these bolts in. Now we're not going to fully secure it on this side, because we want some play, so that way we could put the bolts in on the other side, which we're doing now. These bolts, though, we're going to tighten it all the way. And you notice that I'm not using Allen keys provided because I just really want the process to be a little bit faster. Like I mentioned, we're going to torque these all the way down. This is an electric screwdriver. It's not a drill. So the torque that's going to apply to it will be adequate enough to tighten these down, but not over tighten it. So this isn't a drill. But you can go ahead and use the Allen keys that were provided. Now we're going to go ahead and plug in one of the Z stepper motors. This is a dual Z access. We're going to be doing this on the other side as well. Now we're going to finish torquing down the ones on the other side. Now let's plug in the other Z stepper motor. We are now going to plug in the x-axis stepper motor and limit switch. Of course the bigger plug will be going into the stepper motor and they are keyed so they can only fit in one way. And the smaller one will go into the limit switch which is actually behind a cover. I found that using a, uh, a Allen key can help uh, get you uh, plugged in a little bit easier. Now I've worked on uh, computers for well over 20 years and I think I know an IDE cable when I see one. Dad, zooks! Bender's hard drive no longer contains any of his old memory. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using an IDE cable. I'm pretty sure they're dirt cheap right now and they're pretty much bulletproof. It is keyed and it can only insert one way. We're going to now take two screws and we're going to use these two screws to fasten the display to the front of the 3D printer.
Once again, I'm not a fan of putting printers on their sides, but unfortunately for this process, we're gonna need to. There's two extrusion covers and we're gonna snap these in place underneath the printer. Now, if I was to just be installing these covers, I would never put the 3D printer on its side. However, you notice that there's poles sticking out at the other end of these stepper motors. Well, that's because we're going to be installing the dual Z timing belt on the bottom. So you're going to go ahead and get your pulleys and your timing belt, and we're going to get ready to secure them. You'll notice that there's a flat part here on the shaft of the stepper motor, and we have two grub screws on this pulley. We're going to back up both of these grub screws so we can then insert this over the shaft. We want to make sure that one of these grub screws is going over the flat part of the shaft. That way, when we tighten it down, this pulley isn't going anywhere and it's locked in place. Now we're going to bring these just like a millimeter or two off the surface of the stepper motor. And we're going to go ahead and tighten this one down and then we're going to do the same thing to the other stepper motor. We're going to make sure that we have the belt on the pulley and like I said we're going to make sure that we align it the grub screw with the flat surface of the shaft. Again, we're only going to be like a millimeter or two off the surface of the motor itself. Once we know that we're secure, we're going to go ahead and tighten both of the other grub screws down. You'll notice that this belt is kind of loose. Well, that's because this is a pre-production unit. And um, this is a belt tensioner. You will not be getting this on yours. This was only equipped with this unit and uh, the belts that will be supplied will actually be fitted perfectly for your machine. So you won't have to worry about this step. We're going to now install the spool holder and we want to just back off these T-nuts a little bit so it gives us some breathing room on the extrusion. Just, we're going to just go ahead and tighten this down now. I say before we start printing, we crack it open and see what the guts look like. What do you say? Well, I have to say it is pretty neat and tidy. Not much going on in here. Lots of space. Rocking a uh, 350 watt Meanwell power supply. That's really good to see. It is a silent board. It's running 2209 drivers, all but on the Z axis. We have a 32-bit processor and a open Wi-Fi slot. Hmm, wonder if they're ever going to do that. Oh, we know what time it is. Peely time. Very psychedelic, baby. Yeah! All right, the print is all sealed up and the plastic is removed off the screen. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we got. Now this firmware is definitely in beta. Hopefully what you receive will be a little bit different and have maybe a few more features than what I have. Well, the interface is pretty nice and neat. Um, we click on the nozzle here and we can adjust the temperature up and down. You can either hold it and it'll scroll pretty quickly or you can just tap it and it'll just do it at increments of one. Same thing with the bed, hold it down. And then if you want to, you can just tap it and then it'll go back one or two if I could get it going. I'm hugging the camera right now. This is all on me. Uh, basically moving my hands and I can't really see the buttons all that well because the camera is in the way, but I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> you click on the settings and you will see that you only have three settings in here. Not much going on. And then if you click on the bar in the middle, this is where you can just uh, move all the accesses and home and level. So if we now remove the the card from the reader and then we plug it back in this is pretty cool it will then immediately jump to the, your files on the card so I see what they're doing here say that we go ahead and select a file to print now if we click on the settings there's more stuff going on it's, I think that's pretty cool so hopefully when you get your machine there'll be a little bit more to this Let's continue on. Now let's go ahead and level the bed. Um, first thing you will notice, there's no leveling knobs on the bottom. 
think it's about time that manufacturers do this. It's all solid, it's running on smooth rods, and all it's doing is 16 points of leveling, one probe per point, and it takes about a minute and 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and speed this up a bit. And then we'll check out some other features of this printer. Here we have the part cooling fan and filament runout sensor. Printer is equipped with a direct drive and a wheel to help feed your filament. It is called the Kaiwu Touch Auto Leveling Sensor. Belt tensioner for your X axis. Linear rail for your X axis as well. Dual Z rods and steppers for your Z axis. Dual Y axis smooth rods for a stable base. To adjust the Y axis belt, you have to move the stepper motor. Loading filament is the easiest one I've used so far on any printer thus far. You can't get any easier than that. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to kick off some prints. Let's get to it. Oh, just a little bit of a warning here that uh, camera doesn't really want to focus on red and white for some reason. So I'm going to try my best here. This is actually the only red that I'm doing, and it was a mistake to do red first before the white. You'll see later on. But this is Overture Filament that I've had sitting around for about a year and a half, and it became very brittle, and I'm surprised this cube came out as well as it did. Calibration cube is really sharp in all corners, and actually looks really, really good. The rest will be printed with uh, the sample filament provided by Kaiwu. And uh, you'll see that <laughs> some remnants behind of the red. That's why you don't do that before white. But otherwise, this little bird whistle came out great. I mean, the lines are really nice and sharp. And again, this is a precise file. And you just see a little bit of a whisper right there. Not too bad. Now, this is a calibration cube that's uh, precise comes on the card as well and um, yeah it's not too bad it looks to be about double the size and all the surfaces look nice clean and crisp well except for this one <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here there's a kind of recessed area going all the way down certain it's like maybe it's designed that way I don't know but otherwise everything else looks rather nice pretty impressed and here we have a little ghost keychain. This only took about 30 minutes. And I have to say, this is pretty much perfectly printed here. On the lines, everything looks really, really good. So if you're looking to print something fast, uh, do this little ghost keychain. I decided to print a Benchy. This is the one that I sliced. It's not on the card. And everything looks pretty good, except for like some of this overhangs right here. And you can see it's a little bit choppy. So it sagged, but I mean, the rest of this looks really sharp. <laughs> Again, a little bit of red. Don't do that. Don't do what I did. Apparently it's still stuck in there somewhere, but all the surfaces look rather crisp and clean. Nice solid benchy. Let's go with another batch of prints. Since this is a direct drive, I decided to do some TPU. This is Yoyi Purple, and I have to say, this is pretty stunning. I did have to put in my filament dryer for about three or four hours beforehand, but man, it's pretty darn nice. See, it is TPU, squish it, and 
it's uh, it's got that nice glistening effect to it. But uh, yeah, not too bad. Next is a clock spring design. This is a capsule. It's printed with Jesse PLA Purple Eater. It's not a bottom. I was messing around with the just the first layer there, so that's my fault. And uh, man, this is at a point one. Took about uh, 24 hours to print. <laughs> I have to say, this came out really, really nice. Next, we have another clock spring design. Really dig his designs. This is the reciprocal vase. You may have seen it on one of my previous videos. It's just such an amazing print. Uh, let me zoom in there. I mean, yeah, we got a little bit of stringing going on. You could tell, definitely tell where it's cooling on one side. So, but man, it's still a fantastic print. I mean, look how beautiful it is. Again, it's a 0.1 layer height. Pretty darn nice. Let's do another batch. Well, I was on Twitter and I um, started to print out another clock spring design. This is Necromancer's bottle. And this is at 100% at uh, 0.1. And you can see the detail is just awesome. I mean, it came out really really nice look at look at the detail even on the inside I really like clock springs design so okay let's do now at 175 percent and I mean it just looks better and better 0.1 layer height and it's just stunning I mean it, this printer just printed it pretty much flawless now 275%. The one behind it is at 300%. And man, it's, we go ahead and take a closer look at this. 0.1. I mean, these, this is just amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, I mean, the inside just looks as great as the outside. And uh, a little bit of a a little wisp right there. Let's go ahead and pluck it out. But uh, yeah, I'm very satisfied with the print quality of this. As you can see, I've been really busy printing because I've had this printer for about two weeks. And uh, one of the problems I had with it was assembly. You see that stepper motors are really, the rods are really close to the table. And um, yeah, it kind of gouged my workbench a little bit during assembly. So you have to be very careful with moving this around. Um, you can see the wood shavings still on the shaft on that. And um, if, you know, this is a workbench. So to me, it's not a big deal. But uh, if you were to move this around on a real nice table, better be careful. Next is a Z offset. It is set at one. And um, when it's that low, it's going to just grind into the bed. So I would suggest before you do your Z, just bring it to 0.4 or something and then do your Z offset. And last is the firmware. I just hope that it has more features by the time this machine comes out. This is a beta unit and considering that it's a beta unit, I've had practically no issues with it out of the box. Everything, look at everything just printed great. And uh, if you did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I really wish you a pleasant day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. Catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.